This is the test recording for The Glass Guarded World. I'm Mike Hammock, and I'm here with Brian and Andy. Um, Brian is playing... Lindley Bever. All right, who is a fighter wizard. And Andy is playing... Bandy Brad Goro. Right, who is a rogue. And uh, this is just a one-off, one-shot game just to uh, test our recording equipment and make sure that everything works properly and iron out any problems that occur. Uh, and this game is going to take place in the same setting that our regular games take place in, uh, but it'll take place earlier and with different characters that we, I don't know, maybe we'll see them again, maybe we won't. But this first adventure is called The Tower of Moon the Mighty. Your characters, Bandy Brad, Guro, and Lindley Bever, are a halfling rogue and a half-elf fighter wizard, respectively. They grew up together in the rough streets of Arrival, the island in the middle of the world, and became skilled burglars and enforcers for criminal organizations. After stealing from the wrong household, they fled Arrival, and they now travel the Outer Lands, uh, making their living by committing daring robberies and burglaries. They try not to steal from those who can't afford it, partly out of empathy, but also because the poor don't have much worth stealing. Uh, They're currently traveling through the lands of the Magistracy, looking for good marks. There's plenty of valuable magic to be stolen, and but uh, the downside of that, of course, is wizards are very dangerous targets. You've recently heard about an ancient wizard known as Mun the Mighty. In fact, he's pretty famous, so you've probably heard of him before, but you started investigating him. Uh, in addition to being really, really old, he's also famous for having a strange voice, which you've never heard, by the way, but he's known for having a strange voice, and for trying to extend his lifespan. His tower lies just off the road between uh, Zauberfeld and the big city of One. He is traveling to an academic conference in One for the next 10 days, which makes this an excellent time to investigate his tower and relieve him of anything that would be more useful in the hands of Bandy Brad and uh, Lindley. Now, the first trick, of course, is to get inside the tower. The wizard has left one of his apprentices, a human teenager named Gorwolf, in charge, and you guys have sort of scoped out the area. You've uh, looked around the area to figure out what, uh, what's going on in, in this area, in, in town. There's a small town around the tower. Maybe town is too strong a word, but there are some buildings around the tower. Um, you're posing as travelers passing through the area, although maybe posing is the wrong word. You actually are travelers passing <laughs> through the area. Uh, and you've already chatted up Gorwolf. Um, while being bright in an academic si- sense, he is uh, naive and easily confused in social situations. <laughs> It shouldn't be too difficult to take advantage of him and gain entrance to the tower, or maybe you can find another way in. Uh, once inside, you'll have to keep an eye out for traps and guardians and other things that wizards like to put around their towers. Uh, there are several one-story sco- uh, buildings scattered around the tower, including servants' quarters, stables, a kitchen, uh, a barn or storage building, and a smithy. Uh, the smithy itself might contain some valuable items, because the smith, uh, Agatha, works in precious metals as well as iron. And uh, as far as you've been able to determine, no one has been above the second floor of the tower, aside from Mun the Mighty himself. Uh, people, it sounds like people, other people aren't allowed above the second floor. Uh, the first two floors contain rooms for entertaining guests. Uh, this is what you've been able to infer from talking to other people. Uh, an alchemy laboratory of some kind, a demonstration or meeting room, servants' quarters. Uh, but the exciting stuff is probably higher up. Um, okay. So, um, I guess we'll just start there. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, I guess it's morning. You've, uh, you're st- I, I, I can add a couple more details, actually. Uh, there's an inn uh, called the Crowded Trencher, and uh, there's an antique and magic shop called the Wizard of Waz, and there's uh, a few farms farther away from the uh, tower. So you're, there's a. Uh, I should mention that of the buildings. I, actually, I'll show you. I'll show you guys a, a map of the area around the tower, and then I'll describe it for listeners. Mm. All right. So you can see in the middle of a uh, picture in your mind, if you're listening and not looking at the map, uh, there is a tower in the middle of uh, the map, and then to the uh, northwest of it is a bar, uh, a, a, a gardening shed where the groundskeeper lives, and just uh, s- almost west of the building is a uh, a cookhouse, a kitchen. Southwest of the building are the uh, quarters that the uh, apprentices live in, although there's only Gorwolf in town at the moment because the rest have gone with Mun to his conference. Um, to the east of the tower are the stables, uh, and then to the southeast is the uh, smithy. And then there are other buildings farther away that uh, you don't really need to worry about locating on the map. But as you can see, the closest building to the tower 
is the um, uh, the groundskeeper's shed. All right, now I'm ready to ask. What do you want to do? So Gorwolf, uh, how is he guarding the tower? He doesn't really seem to be making too much of an effort to guard it. He goes in and out as he likes. Uh, he heads over to the, to the the quarters that he lives in, um, and he um, he does seem to fiddle with the door a little bit when he goes in and out. But other than that, he doesn't really seem to be taking any precautions. Um, he does occasionally, you know, just look over in the direction of the tower. Um, and also, he's not the only person around. There's also a groundskeeper who is walking around because he's keeping the grounds. And then uh, Agatha, the, uh, the smith, is also around, although she seems to stay mostly inside the smithy. Uh, the groundskeeper's name is uh, Wenzel, and he's a, an uh, older uh, half-orc. We've already befriended the apprentice, Gorwolf, correct? So yep. he already knows so saying Yep. Okay. Yep. You guys are basically posing as tourists. Okay. Um, and he thinks that you're uh you're here to just to look around the area. You've heard of Mun the Mighty and you were maybe disappointed to find out that he was uh that he was not in town at the moment. Um and that's the angle you're playing up. Does that make sense? Yep. And you said Gorwolf is a like a teenager? It's yeah. like a teenage. Yep. He's uh, uh, fifteen wizard. years old. Human apprentice. Hmm. So not a full blown wizard yet. No. I say we get him drunk and get the key. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That sounds pretty good. Uh, so what? I'm thinking that if Agatha sticks to him to herself for the most part, we would want to do something with the kid while trying to avoid the groundskeeper. Mm -hmm. So if anything maybe invite him out so that he can tell us more about the groundskeeper and offer to pay for everything. And then once we come back, check on the groundskeeper, make sure that he's passed out and go to the tower. Yeah, and I think it's also going to be important that he gets real alcohol, but at least one of us either doesn't drink or pretends to drink, but we got to keep our wits about us. I agree. I'm a halfling, so I'll pretend to drink because I'm sure I'll go that quick. <laughs> <laughs> Gorwolf at the moment is uh, apparently somewhere inside the tower. I guess if you try to stop uh, and knock on his, uh, his where, the the room that he's the building he's staying in, the apprentice quarters, there's no answer. Do you want to proceed to the tower, or do you want to uh, investigate the apprentice quarters, or uh, do you, you want to go look for him, or what? Do you, what would you like to do? Is the door locked to the apprentice quarters? So the servant quarters. Uh, this is a well kept building. It's stone uh, with, a, and you can tell just from here, it has a wooden floor. Um, it, the front door is uh, not locked. You jiggle it, it just, it just opens. How about um, I'll stay outside and keep an eye out, and Mr. Rogue over here can go inside and check out if there's anything worth stealing. Absolutely. Right. I'll be happy to see what I can find. In fact, we may want to repeat this pattern for any unoccupied uh, building <laughs> in the area. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, well, inside, there's an entry room, and it has a table with several stools that sit against the back wall. Bookshelves line the room filled with scrolls. And a worn rug lies on the floor, and it looks like people have been wiping their feet on it. Uh, there are doors on the left and right that probably go to sleeping quarters. And there's some uh, some half-eaten rolls on the table at the back of the room. Okay. Uh, can I do a perception check sure. to see if I can tell roughly how long it's been since someone's been by or if there's any signs of someone still being here? A perception check will tell you just sort of if you see anything secret or interesting in the room. Okay. If you want to investigate... You can maybe try to infer more information. Is that what you want to do? Like you want yes. to, yeah. Okay, so you want to do an investigation check. Okay. Um, so now we have a, uh, an opportunity for me to talk about rules for a moment. Usually, when um, the way I usually would run the game is when you're doing a check like this, I would actually roll for you because you don't know if you have failed to notice anything or not. True. Right? Are you guys okay with that, or do you prefer that the players roll for this sort of thing? Do you think it would make better radio? What do you think? I can see it both ways. I definitely enjoy rolling the dice, but at the yeah. same time, it would make sense that uh, I wouldn't know the DC. Right. So right. I'm fine with you rolling. Okay. Now, yeah. when it comes to attack rolls, that sort of thing, you're going to roll because you know whether you hit someone or not, right? When, uh, anything mm -hmm. where you would know the result, like you failed to jump over the pit or something, mm -hmm. right? There, clearly, you roll those, right? But if it's something where uh, it's unclear to you whether you have succeeded or not, you, like you wouldn't know if you missed the secret door, then uh, I'll usually roll those. Is that cool? Yeah. So what is your investigation bonus? Plus two. So you don't see uh, any signs of 
you don't see any signs of anything really interesting in here. There's nothing remarkable. It, if you had to guess, based on how, uh, based on the rolls, they're still slightly warm. You would guess that the apprentice must have left. Gorwolf must have left probably in the last ten minutes, and you don't see any signs of anyone else having been through here recently. Okay. Um, in that case, I want to go ahead and do a sweep of the room, okay. see, find anything valuable or okay. key-wise. What's your perception bonus? Plus four. I'm looking for keys or anything that's worth stealing that wouldn't be too noticeable. All right. Obviously not going to steal grandma's golden ashes. Okay. Well, um, the the, really the only interesting <laughs> stuff in here is the scrolls in the wall. Okay. On the shelves. Uh, and you, looking through them briefly, uh, they don't seem to contain spells. They contain research. Uh, most of the research is about the basics of spell casting. You know, they're, they're studying, right? Um, but there is also some research into building constructs. Hmm. Okay. Um, but other than that, this is just a, a room where people sit down to eat before going off to do something else. So there's not much in here. There are two doors, however, one to your left and one to your right. Okay. Um, I go put my ear to the one to the left. And see okay. if there's anything inside. All right. And that's perception again. You said it's plus four? Yep. You hear nothing at all. It is completely silent. I open the door. All right. Slowly. So there are two beds, each with a chest at the foot. Uh, they lie on this well-kept floor. Uh, there are two large wardrobes that stand against the walls. And that's it. Nobody's in here. I check the wardrobes and, well, the area as a whole, under the beds, the wardrobes. The, okay. Uh, you said there's chests right yep so the two chests are locked the wardrobe let's see the wardrobes the wardrobes contain robes clothing nothing remarkable and there's nothing uh let's hold on actually you said there were two beds uh, there are two beds under one of the pillows you find a scroll okay and can i decipher what the scroll it says? is a magical scroll of some kind okay um, and you don't have the proficiency to determine what it is but it's probably some kind of spell okay can i try to make a copy of it do i have the time for that um actually i don't no. think i have the materials yeah that would take probably more time effort and training than, than what you have available to I'll make a copy it. of a magical scroll okay so you take the scroll and then there are the uh two chests and other than that there's unless you want to take some wizard's robes there's really not much else of interest in here no, I was considering, if anything, to try to pick locked chest. Okay, you've got uh, the toolkit, and what's your bonus uh, with the with tools? What did we figure out that it was? I guess uh, passive proficiency is just plus two, right? Okay. I'm not sure if it's oh, wow. 30. Okay, maybe. so um, actually, I mean, actually, if you wanted to roll that one, you could. I just rolled it for you. I should have yeah, let you roll it's it. That's cool. But you rolled very well, or okay. I rolled very well for <laughs> you. The first chest, uh, you unlocked it, and it has... It has 10 gold pieces in it, and it also has uh, some drawings in charcoal of different animals, some squirrels. Just, and Just drawings? Just drawings. Personal effects. Yep. Okay. Um, anything in the other chest? Uh, well, you're going to unlock it. Go ahead and roll. You'll know if you unlock it or not. A 10. A 10. It is still locked. Okay. That's fine. Um, I go check the door on the right before okay. I make my way out. All right, so that door uh, is also... Uh, you want to listen? Yes. Uh, you hear nothing? Okay, open the door. Open the door. Inside the room are, again, two beds, two chests, two wardrobes. Same process, investigation, right. lockpick the chests. All right. And uh, go ahead and roll your... Uh, picking the lock on the first chest. Ten, and then the second chest is a five. Both of them are still <laughs> locked. Okay. Um, Some rogue. <laughs> yeah, I know. It must be chilly outside. My hands are all trembly. <laughs> yeah, with a sigh, I walk out, do a final sweep to make sure that I didn't leave anything too noticeable out of place, and then make my way back okay. out. Great. I mean, they're really the place was freakishly neat. Yeah. Right. So uh, you, it was pretty easy to put everything back in nice, neat, straight lines. Oh. It looks, you probably think you're, you're pretty sure you've done a good job and that someone <laughs> wouldn't figure out that you were in here, especially since, except unless that person comes back and is missing their gold. Yeah. Um, or their scroll under the pillow. And the scroll <laughs> under the pillow, right. But it's not obvious, right? Just walking in, you don't see, oh, the place has been burgled. So what's next? Uh, and there's no sign of Gorewolf the whole time. He stayed in the building. Do I see uh, Groundskeeper Willie or Agatha anywhere? Uh, <laughs> uh, groundskeeper Wenzel. Is uh is not visible. 
Uh, Grandskeeper Wenzel is uh, you don't you're not sure where he is from where you're standing. You don't see him. I walk back out, uh, barely open the door just enough to do so. I sigh as I look at you and hand you five gold pieces. I pocket it. <laughs> <laughs> so I where give him to? a thumbs up with my mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we should go find the boy. So there's uh, the groundskeeper's quarters and Agatha's smith shop. Mm-hmm. What are the other buildings that are on the area? So there, so the smith shops to the southeast. There's also a stable. Uh, mm-hmm. There's uh, the groundskeeper's building up to the northwest, and then there's a small cooking building um, uh, just to the west of the tower. And then farther west off of the map that you guys can see, there's also the inn, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a magic shop, a magic and antique shop. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there are also some farmhouses in the area as well. I think I might have a better idea than um, getting oh, him drunk. I should sure. also mention mm-hmm. now that you're now that you're sort of looking in the direction of the tower, other details about the tower that you might care about. This stone tower is about 110 feet in diameter at its base. Uh, it narrows slightly as it rises. It's around 60 feet tall and appears to have five floors. Uh, it's topped by a conical roof. Uh, And there are no windows in the first floor, but there are windows on the second floor as well as on the higher floors. And you can see um, that there are some stone steps that lead up to the entrance doors. So um, do you want to check out the cooking building? Since I think uh, the groundskeeper's place might have the groundskeeper in it and the smith shop might have the smith in it. But I think that the cooking area is probably going to be unoccupied. So we might want to check that out, see if there's anything valuable in there. Of course. The servants have to get in somehow. Over to the kitchen area that's between the servants' quarters and the the ground keepers. All right. So you go to the uh, kitchen. There is smoke rising from the the chimney on the the, uh, kitchen building, but it's not... It looks like the fire is is mostly out. It's not much smoke coming out. How Uh, long ago did the um, all of um, Moon staff leave? uh, You're not sure about that. Hmm. You think it's probably been days, but you're not sure. And you said it's about midday at the moment, right? No, it's morning. It's morning. It's morning. It's early morning. Okay. So you go to the kitchen. Um, the door is actually ajar. It's it's partly open. Um, and as you uh, as you look inside, you can see that there's no one in there. Uh, pass a perception to see okay. if I notice anything. All right. It's, uh, Fourteen. So you can see there's a butcher block table that stands against a wall. Uh, there's a hearth that blazes across from it, and there are crates of supplies and barrels of foodstuffs that are stacked near the door. You want, to search, you want to go in and search, or do <laughs> you want to leave it? Uh, yeah, let's let's do a little bit uh, closer investigation just to make sure we're not okay. leaving anything behind. You want to both look? What, what Your investigation was plus two? What, yeah, I think if we both go in together, we'll cover more ground. Okay. Hey, mine's plus three. All right. Awesome. I can stand watch. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. This is a kitchen. We're just looking for food. You, you, mm-hmm. you don't find much of interest, except that um, you managed to find... You mean you think you can scrape together enough food to make three days worth of rations for each of you, if you wanted to? Yeah, that's worth it. Let's take it. Yeah. All right. So you have three days worth of rations added to your uh, your inventory, just dried fruit, some vegetables that you know root vegetables that will hold up well, that sort of stuff. Okay. I say. Well, you say you had a plan to go ahead and get in. Yeah. So, plan A could be to try to get this kid drunk so that we would be on his side and maybe convince him like first off to tell us some cool stories about moon and then be like oh that's awesome i wonder what the inside of his place looks like and then have him take us back in and tell us about the place so we're not going in blind but a totally different idea would be for me to you know hey gorwolf gorwolf someone's breaking into the servants quarters let's go check it out and have him run back, and then we ambush him once he's inside the building and tie him up. I agree. I think that would work. We can definitely go ahead and scare the kid. I would say... (laughs) But the downside to that is that if we tie him up, we don't have any insight into what's inside the building that we might if if he's with us. True. We could uh, try to interrogate him and get out of him. At that point, he just becomes a little less reliable into what he'll tell us. I like your plan. We don't have to wait the full day to be able to do that with him. Mm-hmm. I would just say, let's try to figure out what the groundskeeper or Agatha will be doing. Mm-hmm. Because we don't want to yell fire and then have multiple people show up. Sure. Yeah. 
while we wait for the boy to come out, do you want to go talk to Agatha or look around to see if we can locate where the guy is? You could also, I mean, you could, you mean where Gorewolf is? No. Where oh, the you said that we know that he's inside the tower. Yeah, right? he's inside the tower. You want, oh, you want to, you want to find the groundskeeper. Right. Okay. Not necessarily find them and go like say, hey, just simply stay at a distance and kind of figure out what he's doing for the day. Okay. Note his location. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. So you want to just walk around the tower area for a while and see if uh, anything. In a stealthy way, though, so it doesn't look like these these weirdos have been trouncing around campus all morning. Right. You don't want to look yeah. like you're scoping the place out. Yeah. Which we Even totally are. you are scoping <laughs> the place out. Yes. Okay. Well, let's see here. Uh, what's what your could perception we be talking bonus? the whole time about how I uh, how mighty Boone is? <laughs> My perception is negative one. Ah, okay. Nonetheless, you both notice that there is smoke rising from the uh, smithy, right? There's there's definitely a, quite a large volume of smoke, so something's being done there. Agatha is probably there, unless that building's going to burn down. <laughs> um, you don't see any signs of activity coming from the uh, shed, but as you uh, as you walk casually near it. You do hear some really loud snoring. Coming from the shed? Coming from the groundskeeper's shed. Hmm. Is there a window nearby that we can peek in through? There are. In fact, I didn't put them on the map that you guys can see, but there are, in fact, windows. Now, the buildings outside of the tower do not have glass windows because that's expensive. Uh, but they do have windows that you could uh, peek through the shutters and try to see what's going on in there. So you want to try to look inside? Yeah, just make sure that he's past that. So if, see, if, uh, this is not a, if this is not a half-orc sleeping soundly inside the shed, then it's a really good illusion of a half-orc <laughs> sleeping soundly inside a shed. All right, perfect. I say it's probably best to not have Agatha meet us. If she's already doing something, let's try to knock on the door and try to get the boy out. Okay. Do we know anything about uh, Agatha? No, you've never met her. Hmm. I can tell you a little bit more about Wenzel's shed here, okay. since you've glanced inside. And there is some light inside that's coming from some sort of magical uh, light on the wall. It's a nice, decent shed, um, at least, or at least it used to be. It's a little bit poorly kept now. So this large shed is filled with gardening tools, crates of seeds, bags of root bulbs. And uh, even just looking at the window, you can smell the smell of soil coming from the inside. And there's a the, the bed that uh, Wenzel is sleeping in uh, doesn't look very well kept. The sheets look like they need to be laundered. And you can see there is a wooden chest at his feet at the foot of the bed. There's some gardening, uh, lots of gardening tools, rakes, hoes, um, shovels, things like that stacked up against the wall. I strongly doubt that a half-orc groundskeeper is going to have anything good. Yeah, or be trusted with a key to the tower itself, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I would say that there oh, could I'm be... Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing that's in there. there is There are a couple ladders in there as well. I should have mentioned that. Hmm. Well, well. Are the ladders long enough to reach the windows on the second floor of Moon's Tower? Yes, they are. Huh. Okay. That sounds... Also... Yes, you also realize that his hut is tall enough to reach some windows on the north side of the tower on the second yeah, floor. I was thinking about that. You might have to make a little bit of an athletic jump, but it would be possible. Well, I've got plus five to athletics, so I'm down for that. Of course, you'd have to climb up on his roof. Mm -hmm. Since I'm small enough, I can if I can stealthily climb up on the roof, would I be able to dexterously make an acrobatic check to jump to the window? Yep, you could do that. I would say... Hmm... We could do multiple things at once. I'm fairly small, so it wouldn't be difficult for me to get on the roof without making much noise. The mm -hmm. only thing is if I sneak into the tower while the kid's still inside, he's going to be surprised to see me. Well, we're sneaking into the second floor, and didn't you say something earlier about, uh, what's his name, Beowulf? <laughs> Gorewolf. Gorewolf. Gorewolf never goes up to the second floor? No, he says no. nobody goes above the second floor except Mun. Okay, so he may be on the second floor, he may be on the first floor, right? but he may hear us either way. That's true. I was thinking if it would be worth it for you to distract him at the door while I sneak in through to the second floor, but I don't really see what we get out of that. Tell you what, I could do my whole someone's robbing your room right. thing and then just hit him with the blunt side of my sword and tie him up. Uh, I would have rope in my Dungeoneer's pack, right? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can do that while you're getting in on the second floor, and then you can explore and unlock it from the inside. That Just works. let me inside. You want to do that? Yeah, we can do that. Um, if anything, since he's already met me, you can say that I'm the one robbing his place or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're going to go up to the door? I'm going to go around to the front door. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you're going to be kind of getting on top of uh, Wenzel's hut, right? Yeah. I say, let's wait for me to get on top of the hut. That way we make sure that I'm able to do that, and I'll give you the green light to go ahead and go warn him. Okay. So, and you're going to make a stealth check to climb up there sneakily? Yes. Uh, and also, an, I get an athletics, an athletics check to climb the hut, if okay. that's what you... Uh, it's not hard to climb, really. It's yeah, that's easy fine. easy check. I weigh 40 pounds. That's okay, it. you can roll that. I mean, you, you'll know whether you've succeeded or not. 15. Yeah, no problem. 15. You're on top of the hut. You want to do You want to do it stealthily. Uh, I'll roll a stealth check since you're not sure. Actually, you would know if he's being stealthy or not. Mm-hmm. But oh, what's your stealth bonus? It's like plus seven. Plus seven, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're extremely stealthy. Oh, yeah. Not a sound. All right, perfect. Nice. All right, so I run around to the front of the tower and I... Bang right. on the door. Oh, Try to get his sound attention. Effect. I like that. <laughs> All right. So you pound on the door, and you, you you wait a little while, and then eventually uh, you hear someone's footsteps coming to the door, and Gorewolf opens the door and looks at you. Huh? Hey, you remember me from earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you remember that other guy that I was with? Yeah, uh, yeah the short one. Yeah, he seems kind of shady, and as I was walking away, I saw him go into um, one of the buildings around the around campus. I think what? I think he might be stealing your oh, stuff. You don't have I, anything valuable in there, do you? I get in such big trouble. Oh, where is he? Uh, back in the servants' quarters. Oh no! I I think he's in there robbing your stuff right now. Do you want me to go help you? Yeah, yeah, v- v- yeah, yeah. Let's go now. All right, let's do it. All right, so you. He runs over there. Um, he doesn't seem to have any weapons of any kind on him, mm-hmm. uh, but he's twitching his fingers. Mm-hmm. So you run to the building, and he bursts in through the door, and he runs to the left. Okay. All right. And he goes to the uh, into that room, mm-hmm. and he says, "But there's no one in here." So as soon as we get inside the building, I shut and I lock the door behind me, and I say, "No, he's in the other side." What? Oh. Very good. And so he <laughs> runs over there. Right as he runs past me, I hit him All in the right. back of the head with my uh, Make long attack roll. All right. Non-lethal damage. I'm yeah, assuming. let's hope for no crit 20s. Yeah. Nice. 19 plus 6, so right. 25. Roll your damage. Wow. All right. Obviously non-lethal. Uh, 11. Whew. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he is down. <laughs> he goes down like a sack of potatoes, just sprawled out on the floor. Out. All right, I give a satisfied little smile, and then I gingerly tie him up, uh, making sure that the knots that I use aren't something that he could undo himself if he woke up. Good. I uh, I also um, get one of those wizard's robes or something uh-huh. and gag him with it so he couldn't uh, make any noise if he did wake up, Okay. and then put him in one of the... Uh, the servant's room, and then lock that door. Okay. Those doors actually don't lock, uh, mm-hmm. but you could... Are there windows inside the... Th- there are windows as well. Okay. Uh, I Are there chairs in there? Yes, you could bar the okay. door with a chair and then get out through a window. That's what okay. I do. All right. All right, good. <laughs> so uh, he's going to be... He's going to be out for quite a while, and he's going to have a big lump on his head when he mm-hmm. wakes up, because that was a solid hit. Uh, yes. All right, so he is out. You are on the roof. Yes. Um, as and he left as... the front door open, by the way. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> as soon as I see the two of them run towards the servants' quarters, I make my move and make a jump, uh, acrobatic jump towards the window. All right. Make an acrobat- acrobatics check. Oh, question before yes. I actually jump. Is the window closed? It is, and it's glass. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what can we can do. 13 plus 5, 18. You, no problem. You are on the window ledge. Okay, what do I see inside? All right, so you're looking in through the second floor window. Okay, so I might, can I position myself in such a way so that I can stay on, like, my knees or my legs on the ledge to try to use one hand to lockpick the door? Uh, or lockpick the window? Yeah. Yes, you could You could try to pick this lock on the window. It right. is, it, and it is, in fact, locked. 
You okay, can see yeah. that it's locked, but and, and it would be difficult to open from the outside, but yeah. it's possible. Uh, okay. Let me first tell you what you see. So you see a large open room with a door at the south wall and another door to the east that probably leads to a staircase uh, going upward. And then there's a staircase uh, going downward as well on the uh, east wall. I'm sorry. Door to the east that leads uh, to stairs going down. Door to the west that leads to stairs going up. This appears to be some sort of lecture hall and maybe demonstration room. At the north end of the room is a slightly raised platform with a lectern. There are 20 stools that have been stacked against the walls. And the floor in front of the platform appears slightly charred or scratched. All okay. right. So you're going to try and pick the lock? Yeah. To try to Go get ahead and roll. All right. 12. No, you're not able to get it from outside. It's just too tricky. That's fine. About how far up am I? Uh, you are about 13, 14 feet up. Too far up to just simply jump down? or You could climb down pretty easily from here. I'll do that. Okay. I'll just make an easy climb check. 19. Yeah, no problem. All right, yeah. Um, I walk back towards the front. Uh, do I see him walking out? Oh, yeah, he's walking out, and I guess he yeah. looks pretty happy with himself. Yeah, I give him another uh, mage hand <laughs> thumbs up. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, it seems that we can't get in through the window, but it does seem like the second floor is still empty. He left the door open. Let's make a quick run through. Yep. All, all right. right. Let's do so that. you run in through the front door, and even as you do that, you can still hear in this area, you can still hear the snoring of, uh, of Wenzel, and there's still smoke coming out of the uh, smithy. All right, so going in through the front door... So you're going in through the area that is uh, labeled A on our map here that you guys can see, but it's just an entry foyer. The entry foyer is lavishly decorated with a red rug, antique wooden cabinets, paintings of Moon the Mighty. There's a magical chandelier that lights up the room. Uh, no fire burning on it, it's just uh, some sort of long-lasting light spell. All the pictures depict a handsome human in his mid-50s. Uh, a pair of doors lie straight ahead. There's also a door to your left and a door to your right. And there's nothing, uh, n other than the nice-looking furniture, nothing look, jumps out at you as immediately valuable unless you wanted to steal the chandelier. <laughs> you want to go left or right? Because we should try to do this as quick as possible, get in, get out. Yeah, I'd say left. Okay, you go left, I'll go right. Let's do that. You're going left? Left. This room is, uh, as soon as you open the door, the room on the other side is, is dark. And you can see some light spilling in from the room you just left, but it, it's pitch dark inside. This is a side chamber. It's a storage room containing silver serving trays, silver knives, forks, and spoons. Uh, you can see glass and silver plates, golden and uh, silver goblets, and other items that might be used as a banquet for royalty, all stacked neatly in cabinets. And they're cabinets with glass fronts. So this is expensive stuff. Are there any, um, any doors that read out of that lead out of this place uh yes there is a door to the east and that's it okay um hmm. i just do a quick investigation check okay. as i walk around once to see if there's anything you are pretty sure that all these cabinets are locked okay <laughs> but other than and and uh anything else uh yeah they all have glass doors you're pretty sure they're all locked and you're also pretty sure this stuff's really valuable this okay. is a lot of gold and silver. I found some silver we can take on the way out. Awesome. All right. And are there any bags or anything that we could just like put everything in? Uh, no convenient sacks in here, I'm afraid. Well, let's keep an eye out. No, yeah, you, went, anything. <laughs> you went the other way. Uh, Maybe pillowcases. Oh yeah. Yeah, pillowcases would work. You went to the other. We'll direction. find the room eventually. Mm -hmm. So the other direction that 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 you went, uh, you went to the uh, right. This is a study or waiting room. It's filled with comfortable couches. The walls are lined with scrolls on, uh, and, and they're actually labeled. Uh, one history is uh, one section is labeled history, and another section is just labeled magic and science. Hmm. I don't see anything like any art on the walls or anything that. There are some more paintings of Mun the Mighty. And this guy really likes uh, pictures of himself, <laughs> huh? In fact, what's your investigation bonus now that you're looking at the paintings? I just realized you're three. Or you're a wizard. Uh huh. I have a scroll you should look at. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, let me take a look at that. Uh, as you're looking at the paintings, you notice something interesting. They all have Mun standing apart from other people. Like, if there are other people in the painting, they're always behind him. Or if there's an object in the painting, it's always behind him. So that he always looks bigger than the object. 
And when it, I when I move, do his eyes follow me? No, nothing weird like that. But if you had to guess, you would guess that these are carefully painted to make him look taller. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Hmm. So other than scrolls and couches and paintings, there's nothing... You didn't see any... I, I, there's another um, uh, magical chandelier. Hmm. I'd say so far it seems like the uh, like I want things that are easily sellable yeah. as well as valuable. So I I say we just uh, keep tabs on the silver and then move on to the maybe the next floor. Go up the stairs. I agree. But I want to take a look at that uh, scroll first. Here. All right. You can tell just by looking at it. It's a scroll of magic missile. Ooh, cool. Someone was keeping it under their pillow. Hmm. They had a loaded gun under their pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Is that something I could read and learn right now? Uh, reading it to learn it would take a little bit of time if you don't have it in your in your spell book. If you you could cast straight off of it if you wanted to, mm-hmm. um, but if you wanted to take the time to learn it, that would take you a little bit of time. How much would uh, something like this fetch on the black magic market? Um, <laughs> uh, hmm, I don't know. Um, Do I have any guesses? I would have to fi- look that up. I'm actually not sure how to how to what the value for that would be in fifth edition. So well, I think it's got to have some value anyway. Oh, for sure. So regardless, yeah, I'm absolutely. Keep yeah. It. I mean, if not us, uh, somebody somebody else will definitely want to use mm-hmm. this. I say let's go to the next door and try to find stairs. Yeah. Okay. You mind if I hold on to the scroll? Absolutely. I have awesome. no use for it. <laughs> Well, regardless of what the book says it's okay. worth, it's really going to be worth whatever anyone wants to pay us for sure. it. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you are currently both back in the foyer, I guess, comparing notes. Mm-hmm. Um, both of the rooms you were in had doors that led into that central chamber there. Uh, do you want? And then there are double doors leading from the foyer into that central chamber. Um, so do you want to enter that central area? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's so this is clearly a banquet hall with an unusual triangular table in the middle of the room. Um, Beautiful upholstered chairs could seat up to 25 people, and there's one chair clearly intentioned intentioned for Moon the Mighty at the uh, rounded northeast corner of the triangle. Uh, There are several magical chandeliers to keep the room lit. Doors lead to the foyer uh, to the southeast as well as... uh, Sorry, southwest. uh, As well as uh, west, north, and south. The east wall is covered with a large tapestry depicting some historical events of some kind. Uh, the walls are covered with landscape paintings. Nothing's jumping out to me as uh, being inherently uh, stealable. Again, nothing, uh, it's, nothing it's, terribly yeah. valuable yeah. Uh, or, or portable and valuable in here, I'm afraid. Guests are still allowed in here, and I'm sure the more valuable stuff are not allowed yeah. in these areas. This is the first yeah. floor. This is where people are frequently frequently going in and out. You're not going to stick really valuable stuff in here unless you're an art collector. I guess there's some stuff that would be valuable. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm itching to see what's on these upper floors. I okay. Agree. All right. So um, there is a door to the north. There is a door, and that's it, actually. There's a door. The, uh, of the rooms you haven't explored, there's just this door to the north, and that's it. Uh, might as well check it out while All right. we're here. Let's go for it. Um, can I do a uh, survival or insight check to see if I can put together from where I saw upstairs roughly where the stairs were to where we're going to yes. go upstairs? Yes. Actually, yes, you can. The stairs for this building seem to be on the east and west on, on both sides. So over in that area, on the, the listeners can't see it, but over in the area labeled F on our map on the east side of the building, those are stairs going up to okay. the second floor. But you can't get there directly. You have to go through D to get there, right? Well, we oh. wanted to go to D anyway. All right. All right. So D no is the northern area party. on this yeah. map. <laughs> All right. So you open the door. The room contains cleaning supplies, but it has other purposes that are not that are not immediately clear. In addition to buckets and mops, there is a large basin of water on the north wall, a shelf full of brushes, dustpans, and other tools. The door to the east has a series of four floor mats in front of it. And as you enter... A pile that you mistook for ordinary rags suddenly jerks to life and takes a roughly humanoid shape. And the lar- the dark indentation where eyes would normally be looks at you, or they, or they look at you, and a voice says, Hello, I'm Lumpen. Can I help you? Hey, Lumpen, we're lost. Where's the stairs? Oh, they're just through that door over there. W- what are you, Lumpen? <laughs> I'm a rag golem. Cool. Are there more golems upstairs? Uh, I don't know actually what's up there nowadays. I haven't been up there in a while. I mostly clean down here. Is there anything you need cleaned? Where's Gorewolf? 
He's out front. Well, if anything, could you go ahead and go towards the front area and clean some of the areas after that? Go ahead and come back and pass out? Sure. Perfect. Well, go ahead and move upstairs. Who, who are you? Oh, we're just here. By, send by the wizard. We're here to help Gorgo, Gorwolf. Oh, yeah, Gorwolf okay. had to run into town, so we're watching the tower for him. Oh, okay. I'll go do some cleaning. Perfect. Thanks, Lumpin. You're welcome. Have fun. We'll try. Be careful. It can be <laughs> dangerous upstairs. <laughs> I like Lumpin. <laughs> yes. He's my friend. Let's keep him occupied. <laughs> All right. So um, there's a door in here. There's those four floor mats I mentioned that lead up to the door. They're like rugs. Like you would see at the front of someone's house where you would wipe your feet. And uh, then there's the door that leads over to the stairwell area. Stairwell? Yep. Okay. You're not doing anything special about the floor mats or anything. I don't mean, mean to draw your attention to them, but you're not trying to avoid them or trying to step on them or anything like that. Well, now that you mention it, okay. uh, yeah. I'm going right. to go investigate them. All right. <laughs> uh, your investigation stream bonus was plus three? Yes. Okay. Um, you notice that they look extremely clean, and they are different colors. One is green, one's blue, one's red, and one's yellow. And they're just floor mats? They're just floor mats. Can I pick up an edge and see if they're covering up anything they are not covering up anything okay does the door have any specific colors that match the mats no all right cool just go up listen to the door okay. and try to open it again are you going to step on them or leave them alone or anything like that just leave them probably should just avoid them okay yeah right. you avoid them. walk around them. you avoid the floor mats you walk up to the door it is unlocked it's best to be uh, wary with wizards yeah yeah all right, so that's actually supposed to be an E. Apparently, Dungeon Painter is not quite fully functional, but that's <laughs> all right. So a set of stairs rise up to the second floor. You can see a large piece of paper pinned to the door at the top of the stairs. And this room is pretty dark, so you'll, uh, uh, you'll need some light if you want to see better. Um, there's not much light coming in from the, uh, from the cleaning room next door. I've got dark vision. Do you? Yeah, you can see okay. Do I? I do not, right? You're a halfling, yeah. You can, you, you've got dark vision. Do I? I oh, it's so. not listed on there. Oh, I thought halflings had dark vision. Maybe not. Can we just say they do? <laughs> <laughs> we should be able to look that one up real quick, right? The, the real question is, does Lumpen have dark vision? Can he help us rob it? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sure we could definitely get him to help us. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything here about dark vision for halflings. Yeah, so I, I don't think they I got half um, dark vision. You want to go scout ahead and I'll keep an eye out for Lumpen? Sure. All right, let's do that. All right, so uh, where are you going? You're going up the stairs? Uh, I think we just both went up the, the stairs, and he's maybe at the top of the stairs, like keeping guard or something like that, right? Oh. Yeah, um, he's going into the room that's dark while I'm staying by. Oh, no, I mean, the room that's dark is the stair room. This room here is, is a dark oh, room wow. with some stairs on, this, on the eastern wall. Mm -hmm. There's some stairs, so the stairs sort of curve around the wall. Uh, there's like a little notch here where the stairs stop. The room is dark. And then at the top of the stairs is a note uh, that's like pinned into a door at the top of the stairs. Well, if it's dark, I think probably it's not going to be so dark whenever we get uh, past the stairs. True. So if you want to just like grab onto the back of my cloak or something and just follow me. <laughs> Let's do that. As long as we don't need okay. to use cloak. Uh, All right. You note. go up the stairs and uh, I have somewhere here the note for you guys written in common. And here it is. And so read it out loud for the sake of the listeners, although it may be a little hard to read that scratchy handwriting. <laughs> Gorewolf, the second floor should stay locked while I am gone. There is nothing in the upper floors that you or anyone else needs to worry about. Stay out. I mean it. I've even trapped the door. It's a dangerous trap, so leave it alone. I would hate to have to find a new head apprentice because you are really quite good, even if you are too curious. I'll tell you about the new experiment when it is a bit safer. It could change the world, but I want to make sure it does so in a way that helps everyone, rather than an, oh gods, we're really all going to die sort of way. You have plenty of other chores and reading to do. Go do them. Now. Mun. That was the first part of a two-part story, which was recorded as a test before we recorded our first regular episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next time with more tales from the glass-guarded world. <laughs>